Is this now the end of Zuma's legal troubles in this specific case? To discuss this, I'm joined by legal expert Mpumalelo Zikalala. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Zikalala, for your time here on SA tonight. It's great to speak to you on this issue that has a lot of people reacting, uh, you know, in extreme ways. Uh, this has been an emotional and uh, contested issue for some time now. Am I right in saying that the remission decision came pretty much from left field and was not anticipated by anyone? Definitely. And if you look at the history of when such decisions are usually implemented, it's usually after a lot of thought has came into uh, that particular decision from, from, from the president. I think the last time we had something which is similar to this was when we were fighting the pandemic. In that instance, we were saying, look at COVID and the manner in which is, it, it is deemed as a pandemic, the manner in which is transmitted from one part into another. Let's look at the, 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 the manner in which the prisons are actually situated and the congestion which takes place within the prison. So the spreading of the pandemic is going to be large. So it's one of the interventions that was there in dealing it with a pandemic that could have ex exploded within the prison system was to say, let us let a few individuals go. But if you look closely at the technicalities, if you then say a remission should then apply, you then say, uh, I'm going to reduce the sentence that is there. There are two schools of thought. One would say, if my sentence was going to come to an end, there's no correctional supervision which I'm going to go into, I'm now let go. The other one would then say, if my sentence comes within the provision in which I made to consider for community supervision or for parole, that means I can start to apply for that. But before you are let go, we're let free. You need to attend, you need to make a submissions to the supervision committee and also to the parole board, either for medical parole or your normal parole. And based on the recommendation that they make to the commissioner, then you can be released um, as, 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 a, as a parolee or as a detainee who is now serving their sentence outside the confines of, of the prison wards. But another school of thought is then to look at it in this way and then say, Mr. President, these are the type of, of, of laws or privileges that you should apply very sparingly. Because what we are then doing is that if you release 9,000 individuals, there may be 9,000 victims that are there that you haven't consulted. Now, how are we going to regulate the process of consulting with them, especially to those prison, prisoners in which the sentence is going to end within the shortest amount of time? If we haven't consulted with them, where does it put the element of justice into all of this? These particular individuals did not walk into jail. It was after a due process was done through the law enforcement agencies, then it went to the court, and then the presiding officer, other administrator, a judge, made a ruling. And that ruling was given after a careful methodology and applicable judicial precedent was applied. So it's not as if their sentences were thumb sucked. There's a manner in which it's been followed. Now, on under what processes or what under what terms and conditions do you then say, Mr. President, I'm going to then apply for a remission of those sentences? Yes, it is a power issue there. No one is denying that. But it was it is one of those instances and tools that should be applied very sparingly, but most importantly, make sure that it's rational when you are applying it. Do you think, as a legal expert, that this decision was rationally applied and that despite the fact that it was unexpected, that it is a legitimate option available to the government in this instance? I think we would need a bit more information before you come to, to, to that particular conclusion. The information that you need, for example, would be what is the current numbers of, of, of detainees that we have? Let's not look into those as to the whole prison system. Let's separate it in, into prisons, for example. So let's say, how many uh, centers do we have in KZN? How do we have in, uh, in the Eastern Cape, Harding, etc.? Let's look at the amounts of beds which are going to be freed if the remission then succeeds. Let's look at the manner in which remi this remission is going to apply. Most importantly for me, let's look at the victims. Are they going to be consulted? The number of people in which you are going to release today, are they going to get an opportunity to talk with their offenders? Is there going to be a, a victim offender uh, uh, program which is going to take place so that the reintegration of those particular Particular offenders to the members of the public is something which is done seamlessly, and we do not wake up uh, to a person that wrongly tripped, no matter how minor the offense was. So it is on those bases in which this has to be interrogated to then say, Mr. President, what is most important for us is let's look at the rationality of the whole thing. What we are trying to achieve. Is it going to be achieved by engaging in this particular act that you are engaging in, despite as who the benefactor of those particular, uh, the particular action is going to be? But let us look at the most important question. Is it in the best interest of South Africans for you to engage in this particular process? If it is, then you've done okay. But if it's not, you may have overstepped the mark. 
I think we also need to investigate or interrogate how the remission decision has been applied differently to the other 9,000 as yet unnamed inmates and to former President Jacob Zuma, who was in jail for less than two hours, I believe, and then back at home. Um, do you see a difference in how that process is is going to be or should be applied? I mean, I'm assuming the other inmates have not all just been let free this morning. Hmm. I, I think on that one, it was a matter of a technicality. Call it a coincidence or to call it an orchestrated move. Um, but on, on the former president one, this is how it usually would, would have worked. You have less than two months in which you need to serve and then you are free. If you come back to jail, you are booked in. And immediately after you've been booked in, there's a, a remittance order that has been issued reducing the sentences which are currently applicable by two months. That means automatically within a matter of few seconds, you are then eligible for you to be released. As I stated earlier, maybe it is a coincidence, maybe it is time, or it's just the fortune of the former president that would have applied in a particular manner. So the, the, the rest of the prisoners that are there, or the rest of the 9,100 and some horse which are there, the question would be, how much are you left with serving your sentence? have you if if we then apply this remission what do you qualify for do you qualify for you to be released in a similar manner as a, as a former president do you qualify to be released under released under com, uh, a community supervision mm -hmm. or do you qualify to be released under parole if it's community supervision or parole you are not released immediately as your matter still needs to serve within those two committees and those committees would recommend to the commissioner and then the commissioner will be able to take a decision whether you are released or not so you it may have given you a, a brief ticket or open the door for you to be released, but there's still other things that you need to travel, which is why we didn't have seen today the doors of prison being opened and 9,000 individuals walking out. But nonetheless, on the other ones or the prisoners in which the, their term of sentence is going to come to an end, I still think consultation with the victims ought to have been done or a process in which that could have been able to be determined or at least some type of, of steps which are going to say, Mr. President, this is the impact of the decision which, which is going to have on members of the public. If these individuals are released today, these are the X number of prisoners which are going to go out without the offenders having been consulted with. Let's consult them first before we take this decision. Where do we base that on, by the way? Remember, any decision which is taken that has the possibility of affecting the greater numbers of the public must meet three things. It must be lawful. In this case, the Constitution allows you to perform in that particular, particular act, that's a tick. Second one, it must be rational. Well, that can be a later argued that is not rational depending on the impact and the interest that is being seek. But lastly, that leads to consultation with members of the public if that it must be procedurally fair. And part of the procedure being fair is the consultation of all individuals who are going to be impacted by the decision so that they're able to come in and, and state their views. Even if it was an advert that went out to a local media saying that the president intends to act, 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 to act in this particular manner, what is your view as South Africans? I think it would have been able to suffice those three tests that must be passed. Apart from consulting with the victims, which, of course, as you say, is incredibly important for the, for the procedure to be fair and rational, but also what about the other thousands, hundreds of thousands of inmates who've been seeking parole for many years, who have been denied time and time again on various grounds. What message does this send to them? I, I think what, what should be noted is that what this remittance actually does for, for the parole detainees, it says, or the, the parole applicants, it says to them, it does not mean that parole has been automatically granted. In fact, it opens the door for the ones which are going to qualify now out of this remittance to make an application for parole. So it's actually, maybe if you seek it in another manner, it may even clog up the system because mm -hmm. the parole, parole board is going to wake up today with an X number or maybe 100 more applications on their desk compared to the 50 that they had yesterday. Simply mean because the number of people that are now eligible has then increased. Now then the question is, if the parole board is not able to work efficiently, which is, is, is something which I cannot vouch on or cannot say it works best, best or worst because I'm not really mm -hmm. uh, in touch in the manner in which they do things. But then the question is, did, did you consider that, Mr. President, the, the potential clogging of the system which is going to come about? Are you ready and the resources are ready in order for you to deal with the influx of new applications which are going to come in? Are the resources of, of the prison resources enough to be able to deal with all those things? Now, 
That's the level of consultation and that's the part of rationality that must be considered before the president takes this particular decision. No one is saying that it's incorrect. Yes, it's within his powers. The constitution says so. But any decision which is taken by the president it must be in the best interest of South Africans. Most importantly, it must meet rational sense. And part of that rational sense is that it must be taken to protect the best interest of, people, of the people of South Africa. We have run out of time. I'm, I must, however, ask you one last question. If I could ask you to keep your answer concise. Um, there are certain parties who've already said they intend to challenge this decision. Um, would this decision stand uh, the test? You know, in, in courts, should aggrieved parties uh, decide to appeal? In its current form, I, I don't think so. But I, I, I am answering from a perspective that there are a number of information that hasn't been provided. Mm -hmm. The most important thing would be, Mr. President, show us the information that you relied on, that if you provide this particular mission, the certain relief which is being seeked is going to be provided. That's a simple numbers game. How many pests did you want? How many pests did you get after the mission has been received? And then you would have your answer. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. So, so that decision going to be tested most likely on the basis of rationality. That was legal expert Mpumalela Zikalala giving us his insights into the decision uh, to release former President Jacob Zuma uh, under remission.